I'm off Pacific Coast Highway in Malibu and it's just absolutely beautiful. Even though the sky is gray today, it's beautiful. This video is for you if you have a brain that never quiets down. This video is for you if it's hard for you as much as you need it to find the quiet spaces in your mind to rest and recharge. This video is for you if you define yourself as neurodivergent, highly sensitive, ADHD, or any other brain neurotype that sometimes, where sometimes you feel like you just don't feel like everybody else. If that sounds anything like something that you need, then stay with me so we can chat a bit. So I have the kind of brain that never seems to want to shut off. Even when I find myself doing the quietest things that I could possibly do, sitting alone in my room, on the couch, here at the beach, relaxing and recharging, my brain goes into overdrive and it thinks and it solves problems and it ponders and it just does not turn off. And that's been a struggle I've had my whole entire life. It's really hard for me. It's really hard for me to just quiet down inside. So I have to do a lot of extra work in order to find those quiet places in my day and in my space to take care of myself. So right now I've taken myself on a drive through a canyon <laughs> over here to the coast and um, it helped a little bit. But even on that drive, I couldn't just sit with myself. I needed to listen to a podcast and fill my brain with thoughts and try to make connections. It's as if if you can imagine a dot to dot uh, activity book for a child and constantly dots are being connected nonstop. Even when the pen is put down or the crayon is put down, my brain wants to connect dots and it can't just be in the stillness. But the biggest problem for me is it's in the stillness that I so desire to be. I want it to be quiet in there. I want to just be with my thoughts. I want to just be able to look at the ocean over there <laughs> and empty it all out. But I can never do it. Does that sound like you? Do you have a hard time doing the same thing? I can never do it. I don't even know if I am aware of what a quiet brain would be like because I don't think that I've ever had a quiet brain in my life. <laughs> the times when I seek out quiet for myself, I'm usually sitting alone, um, you know, not doing anything. and. Oh, I'm so just super distracted right now by like five uh, vintage cars just drove down Pacific Coast Highway and they were all so beautiful. Um, I can't just shut, shut it off. So even if I'm sitting quietly in a space that is a space of my choice and an environment of my choice, if, if I'm, my body is quiet, that's one thing. I, I can successfully quiet my body and I can successfully remove my, mm, I can successfully remove myself from like a situation that I don't want to be in. But even once I've removed myself from whatever situation and I'm sitting quietly by myself, my brain doesn't quit. <laughs> um, it ponders and it worries and it it tries to figure out a, a it, it it reviews the situation over and over again, whatever the thing is that's on my mind. Um, my brain will switch back and forth from doing that to getting some fabulous idea for a, a talk I want to have here with you or for a project I want to work on or. I'll be thinking about a, a dream that I had and what that dream means, or then suddenly it'll switch to 
um, the things that I need to do to prepare my home for when my son comes home for Thanksgiving. You know, it's all over the place. And I, I'm so curious what it's like to be like in a more transcendental state. And I've tried meditation. In fact, I, I meditate a lot. I'm a proponent of it. But when I meditate, <laughs> it's, it's still not the quietest place to be. Um, a lot of my meditation practice is what I guess we're all supposed to be doing, which is the practice of trying to let the excess thoughts or the unwanted thoughts pass through. And I'm getting kind of good at that during my meditation practice, letting those excess unwanted thoughts pass through. But I think what I would really prefer to have happen is to not have them be there in the first place. You know, like I'd really appreciate if once in a while my brain would allow me just to stay in like a space where it's constantly beautiful. Where in a space where like I, I don't have all the experiences of my 55 years of life and I don't have all the traumas of my 55 years of life to, to, to look back on. And I know this is high in the sky thinking. So for those of you that might like drop down in the comments, oh, that's unreasonable, you know, stop whining. Everybody has something, you know, nobody's brain works like that. I, I know, I'm well aware, but part of me being a neurodivergent autistic adhd -er is I think about things that are likely very impossible <laughs> and I'm complex and that's just the way that it is. It's just the way that I work. So you can leave the comment, but I'm just going to either not care about it or then you're going to make me ponder about it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would love to have lived in a time when there weren't all of the things. Um, I would love to have known what it was like to be like early human and before there were jobs and bills and car payments and car repairs and college fees and holidays and having so many friends to keep up with <laughs> and politics and health conditions and appointments to be made <laughs> and paperwork to fill out. Don't you wonder what that would have been like? It would have been fabulous existence to just be able to sit and enjoy your surroundings and worry about where your food was going to come from and go to sleep and then wake up and do that all over again. Yeah, I just want things to be quieter up there in my head. And for a good reason, you know, when it comes right down to it, I want things to be quieter up there because I want space to just listen to the birds and the ocean. I just want space to watch the seagull flying by. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, but to watch the seagull flying by and just enjoy her. I remember when I was a young girl, three to seven, eight, nine, around there, just before childhood started getting really complicated. I remember sitting and spending a lot of time staring off into space. And you don't have that many worries when you're the ages between three and nine. You know, there were, there were 
I lived in a loud house and my parents argued often, but you know, there weren't bills and there weren't jobs and there were, it wasn't a lot of paperwork and all that kind of stuff. Right. So I would just stare off into space and get lost in the quiet of my head. There weren't worries. And I would stare off into space so often and for so long that my family would walk in front of me and wave their hands in front of my face to see if I was there. And my eyes weren't blinking, like, like I was completely checked out. Um, that's something that autistic people, children, and some adults do. Um, I stopped doing that. And I'd like to be able to do it again. I want to just stare off into space and not be thinking about anything. Yeah, I have a really active brain. Um, what's it like for you? What goes on in your head when you're trying to mellow out and relax at the end of your day? Or another question for you, what do you do to quiet yourself down? What do you do? You know, for neurotypicals, things like meditation and yoga and going on a walk and, you know, exercise and those kinds of things might work, but their brain isn't the same and it doesn't respond to the same stimulus that neurodivergent brains do. So I'm wondering if you have a mind like I do, and I know a lot of you do because you've already left me comments saying that you relate to what I'm talking about. I'd love to hear from you. How do you take care of your mind? How do you take care of that thing up there that's keeping us alive <laughs> and keeping us conscious and keeping us thinking? And how do you slow it down? Thanks for chatting with me. I hope you enjoyed the beach. I know I've been like really fidgety this time, but it's just how I feel today. I'm feeling really fidgety. Anyway, thanks for being here with me. I love to hear your thoughts. Leave me some thoughts in the comments and we'll talk again soon. Take it easy.